bottles. <laughs> so I started to get a bit worried during the meal because I was thinking, what well, you know, don't they realise a the menu del dia, the maximum is a, a bottle. I mean, some bars it's only a glass of wine. Yeah. This met them uh, with their menu del dia of ten euros was a bottle of Albarino <laughs> uh, to go with it. Uh, but I, I was thinking, ah, some of these clients. <laughs> Are certainly drinking more than a bottle of wine because there's been more than ten bottles opened <laughs> up already. <laughs> as the uh, as the lunch was coming towards its conclusion, very happy group indeed. Uh, the, the head of the group said to me, "Mark, Mark, I'm paying." And I said, "Well, you can't pay for me. I pay separately." And he said, "No, this lunch is on me. It was fantastic. I'm paying for everyone." So get the waiter and get the bill. Uh, so the waiter came over and put the bill down. The guy picked up the bill and he nearly fell off his chair. He, he fell back. He nearly went on the, the floor behind him. He, he was so surprised. He said, what? No, 99 euros. He said, there must be a mistake. <laughs> He said, we've drank about 20 bottles of Albarino. <laughs> we've had about two bottles of Albarino each. How could that be? There must be a mistake here. And I said to him, I, I told you at the beginning that it was a menu del dia. It's a set price menu, 10 euros. <laughs> and during the, me during the meal, I actually went over to the waiter and I said, um, are you going to note um, the extra bottles and we pay for them? Make sure. Uh, and the, the waiter said, no, not to preoccupe no, no, no pasa nada. I was thinking, this is very strange and very, very generous in this bar. So I said, the client couldn't quite believe that it was only, because they, they all came from, the, they were uh, surgeons at the, uh, many of them were surgeons at the hospital in Dublin. So they, they uh, were quite prepared to pay quite a lot more than the hundred euros for ten people. That's the amazing. guy put the put the, the, the uh, three notes on the the plate, the silver plate, three fifty euro notes. And I said, um, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yeah, they they deserve a propina. They deserve a tip, fifty euro tip." So the the waiter picked up the silver tray, took the the money away, and then, then he came back with the 50 euros <laughs> as a change. And it, the client just waved him away. So the, <laughs> the waiter ran away into the kitchen with the, <laughs> the money. 50 tip. And the, the whole kitchen came out. So the whole, the owner of the restaurant and the kitchen team, everyone came out to, to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of. Uh, there were a lot of greetings, without, uh, a lot of sign language between the Irish group and the, the kitchen team. I was saying they're obviously they're so pleased with the tip. It's not usual. That's uh, a Camino. That's a Camino. Such a such a big tip, a fifty euro tip. Quite quite extraordinary. That's a Camino, um, isn't it? So, yeah. So what I can normally um, tell people is is lots of these little stuff little stories that I have amassed over the years, some of them to do with food and drink. There, there was another one if we've got time. I got time, I, I got bore, all, of them, all of them. I won't bore you with too many of them, I'll give you just one more to get a flavour. There was one Irish client uh, on the group tour that was a writer and um, honestly um, he 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 was consuming about five bottles of Albarino a day, uh, but he was always the first up. You know, when I got up for breakfast seven in the morning, he the, the guy was up at seven in the morning. He was the only person I saw at that time in the morning. Yeah. He said, "Mark, Mark, I could eat a horse. I'm so hungry." Uh, you know, but the, the first Camino stop at eleven o'clock every morning. He ordered waiter bottle of wine. Everywhere he went, he ordered a bottle of wine. So that the, his evening finished about half twelve, one o'clock in the morning, in the the bar in the Casa Rural. Uh, I'd, I'd get up to go to bed, and he'd say, "Mark, you're not going anywhere." And then he put his hand up. Waiter, never bottle of wine. 
I was, I was, uh, at one, one in the morning, I was thinking, God, that, I've, that's counted. I've just counted that's his fifth bottle. So I, after a few days of this, you know, I did, I did tell the head of the group I was worried about him. The head of the group said, Mark, just relax. Don't worry about him. He's having a great Camino. Just leave him alone. He's fine. But this guy used to be, annoy me a bit, the, the Irish guy, because he, he used to walk ahead of us and phone me up. <laughs> and he said, Mark, Mark, I'm lost. He, he, he said, there's a stone wall and, and, and there's some cows in this field. But, I mean, you told me to follow the yellow arrow. There isn't any yellow arrow in this field. He, he said, where am I? He said, I don't know where I am, but you must know where I am. Where am I? And I said, well, how do I know where you are? You see, you walk way ahead of us. I don't know how far you are ahead of us or where you are exactly. And he said, but you're the guide. You're supposed <laughs> to know everything. You must know where I am. You're the guide. That's what I pay you for. Yeah. He, and he, he annoyed me. He, and then I, I said, well, what did I tell you if you get lost? And our, our, our Camino briefing, I said, look, you have to retrace your steps and remember the last pure arrow. Where was the yes? The last ye yellow arrow you saw. So go back. Go back until you find the last yellow arrow. That's the advice you were given. And then sure enough, you know, half an hour later, there he was at the junction of the Camino. There he was waiting for us. But he say so he did that a few times during the Camino to to increase my stress levels, but uh, whether we, whether he was being entirely serious or not, I don't sure, or, or whether it was to do with uh, the alcohol consumption, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. No, that's that, that's a really interesting story. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, for now, go, go, going on. Um, what is the most amazing thing about the Camino? And wow! Sorry, uh, I'm a little yeah. bit, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, emotional, but after uh, I will tell you why. But please, uh, what what is the most uh, amazing thing about the Camino, please? Well, for me, um, well, it's not just one thing, you know. So, for for example, uh, for for a lot of people, what is amazing is. Uh, you know, especially for the in initiated, you know, for the, the first time pilgrim, is the yellow arrows, for example. Be uh, 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 so, because I obviously have walked with uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of people over the years, or have met thousands of thousands of pilgrims over the years as well. And one of the things I, I, I noticed is for the first timers is that they are, can be very scared, apprehensive, you know, fear. When, when they realized it's not only the physical challenges of which I can relate to of you know being out for many it's being outside your comfort zone Walk, walking you know quite large distances but walking from you know places they've never heard of before maybe you know they, they don't know anything about Arensi, Monforte de Lemos, uh, Ribadeo uh, Farol, Carunia, Bayona, Vigo, Tui. Um, they think, God, how can I walk from there to Santiago? I haven't got a clue where I am. So, the, so it has such a tremendous impact. Is when you see the, the see the yellow arrow, but then there's obviously there's, a, there's all the paraphernalia that goes with that. So there's, there's obviously for the more religious people. You know, there's the, the, the seeing the, the figures of Santiago on 